Verse 17. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and brag about your relationship to God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you're instructed by the law, if you're convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of infants, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? Do you, you who say that people do not commit, should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who brag about the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Here is probably one of the most powerful passage, passages of hypocrisy that is in the scripture. Basically pointing at people that are claiming, and obviously it's focused on the Jews, but we can learn a lot about it in today's Christianity, especially us who are in the church, and especially for people like myself who preach and teach and commend themselves as, as leaders. We have to take account at what we are holding on to. So if we are judging others and we are calling ourselves to teach others, yet in that teaching, we are also missing the point and not living by what we're saying. We are in, a, in of ourselves condemning ourselves to the very thing that we are prideful about. Spiritual pride is one of the worst types of pride. Because on the, what Paul's talking about is on the outside, everything looks honky-dory. Everything looks great. Uh, I have got, I've got my devotion time. I'm, I'm running a connect group. Um, I'm, I look good to my leader. I, I look good to the people around me, friends and family. You've got everything on the outside looking good, but what's going on inside your heart is all backwards and it has no reflection of what's really happening. So on the outside, everything looks good. And that's exactly what these people were going through. On the outside, hands were lifted, Bibles under their arms, coming to church every week, giving every week, but inside their heart, they really didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They really didn't have intimacy with Him. And what happens is a bit of storm, a bit of trial, a bit of temptation, a bit of stuff, and all of a sudden there's no weight in that relationship. There's nothing to actually hold them, and therefore they fall away. So culturally speaking, Paul's speaking to the Jews. He's saying, you guys need to get your act together. You're a chosen people. You are under the law and you're pushing the law onto everyone else. You're saying you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, and condemning people by their actions. But look at your own life, guys. Look at your own world. You're just as bad as them, and therefore you're pushing people away from what God wants actually to happen in this world, which is for everyone to have intimacy with Jesus Christ and have a relationship with their Father in heaven and be empowered to live by the Holy Spirit that's what God wants. That's why he died on the cross. So stop putting the law on other people and living and out of that place. Stop being spiritually prideful. Don't wave your, your knowledge of the Bible around to other people. Don't quote scripture to them, which, which actually hurts them in such a way. Rather, get on your hands and knees and wash their feet and, and be someone that's a servant and loving people rather than shoving stuff down their throat. And so Paul saying, because you're doing that, my name is being pulled down. And God does not like that because the design of, of this, whole, this whole plan is that Jesus and the name of God, Yahweh, would be lifted up to the highest place. Why? Because He is perfect, He is holy, and He is glorious. So if, if we're living two different lives, if our lives don't match up tonight, this week, whenever, as soon as possible, you've got to get your life right with Him. And don't have any spiritual pride. Just because you went to Bible college, just because you're a leader, just because you're going to church does not make you better than anyone else. You still have to cling on to the cross and what Jesus did through His sacrifice on that place and 
hang on to the power that raised him from the grave. That is the only thing we've got. And then out of that place, you'll find freedom in worship. You'll find freedom in giving. And you'll find freedom in every area of your life. So really what we're talking about is an issue of the heart. That's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about the state of our heart. And that's what Paul was pointing to. And as Romans unfolds, man, it's gonna get so exciting. You do not wanna miss one week at change. This thing's gonna ramp up every week. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, if you get a hold of the gospel of Jesus Christ through this book, your life will be transformed forever and you will change other people's lives for the glory of God. You will have intimacy with Christ like you've never believed. If you let this word get down deep, because the only person that can change a heart is God. So, verse 25 says, Circumcision has value if you observe the law, but if you break the law, you have become, must have been the circumcision word. I know, so, <laughs> but if you break the law, you have become as though you have not been circumcised. So they were, they were uh, commending themselves by physical actions, saying, because I'm circumcised, I am a cut above the rest. <laughs> but, <laughs> but seriously, but isn't, isn't that how we live our Christianity? Isn't that what we do to one another? I know I do it all the time. I, I hang on to physical title and position and role rather than hanging on to what God is doing inside my heart through the Word of God. And so, or we hang on to our own selfish pride of not being that. So I would rather do nothing and stay out of the plan and just kind of judge other leaders and judge them, oh, they're just all about, you know, money and building churches and build, church is not about the building, it's about people. Yeah, but meanwhile, you're not contributing anything and not adding to the kingdom, yet you're judging other people. So no one wins in this constant, emerging, transient, young adult generation. No one wins by having these kind of attitudes. You don't win by judging other leaders and leaders don't win by, by ruling over other people by their physical position. And so Jews were putting on other people saying, we are above you because we've been circumcised. But Paul's saying, well, if you're circumcised and you're not observing the law, then that means nothing. The rest of it's chucked out. It doesn't mean a thing. All it is is an outward appearance to God that means nothing to him. So if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? Basically saying that the outward is not what matters, really what's happening on the inside and from the inside, then living out of that place and observing what God wants us to do. So surely that's more important than the outside. The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who, even though you have the written code and circumcision, are a lawbreaker. A man is not a Jew if he is, the, if he is only one outwardly nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's praise is not from men, but from God. <laughs> 